I feel like this video is long, long overdue. And that is me defending my quarterback, Dakota Rain Prescott. You may know him as Dak. And after yesterday's game against the New York Football Giants, it once again proves why Dak Prescott is the leader of the Dallas Cowboys and the future of the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I know some of you, you know, people out there who claim to be Cowboys fans, who are still not sold on Dak Prescott for whatever reason. I mean, this guy has put up really great numbers his first three seasons in the NFL, and nobody seems to care to talk about it. And I get it. I understand it. The Dallas Cowboys is America's team. Why are they America's team? They're America's team because you love, you either love them or you either hate them. Not to mention they're the most valuable team in pro sports in the entire world. But when you are the quarterback for America's team, you are susceptible to the most criticism. So without a doubt, Dak Prescott is on the hottest seat. He's always ridiculed for everything he does. Oh, he's not accurate enough. He can't throw. He can't run an offense. He's a manager. He's this. He's that. But when he has performances like he had yesterday against the Giants on the road in a game where it was meaningless, but also important because you want to go into the playoffs with some kind of momentum. You want to go into the playoffs with some kind of with a loss, especially against a division rival. You want to go into the playoffs with that confidence. You you want to go into the playoffs figuring things out. And that's what they did with Dak Prescott. But anyway, we're not going to talk about the Giants game. We're going to talk about Dak Prescott and the facts about Dak Prescott. Stats. Oh, I got some stats for you guys. Oh, boy. All you Dak haters, I got stats for you. Check it out. Three seasons Dak Prescott has given us. He's given us three seasons. Only three. You know, we forget the guy came into the league. There were seven quarterbacks that were drafted before Dak Prescott. That was uh, Jared Goff. He was drafted number one. Carson Wentz went number two for Philly. Uh, Paxton Lynch for the Broncos, who went 26 overall. He's not even playing anymore. I'm not even sure if he's in the league anymore. Uh, You remember a guy named Christian Hackenberg? He was drafted by the Jets, number 51 in the second round. Uh, How about Jacoby Brissett? Yeah, Jacoby Brissett, you know, he's had a pretty solid career so far as a backup. He was drafted by New England, and now he's in Indy right now. So, you know, he went, you know, 91 overall in the third round. How about Cody Kessler? Cody Kessler went ahead of Dak. Number 93, third round. And then Connor Cook. How about Connor Cook? Can't forget about Connor Cook, who went to the, uh, I believe he was drafted by the uh, the Oakland Raiders. But he was drafted 100th overall in the fourth round. And then, of course, Dak Prescott came after him in the fourth round where Dallas got lucky, hit the lotto, and he fell out the sky into Jerry's lap. Since he's been drafted behind all his quarterbacks, that's a deduct the Paxton Lynch's and the Christian Hackenberg's and the Jacoby Brissett's and the Cody Kessler's and the Connor Cook's. Let's get rid of them because they, 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 they're not relevant right now in this conversation. The only two quarterbacks that Dak is going to be compared to going forward in his NFL career is going to be the two quarterbacks. One in L.A. in Jared Goff and one in Philadelphia in Carson Wentz. Let's compare the three quarterbacks, shall we? So Dak Prescott, his first three seasons as the Dallas Cowboy uh, leading guy. He's got 32 wins to 16 losses. Sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good, right? Yeah, I would say so. He's 7.4 as far as his yards attempt. So he's averaging almost 7.5 yards per attempt. So it's not the greatest, but it's not terrible. It's not what you would say is dink and dak, as a lot of you guys out there want to assume uh, associate him with. Let's get into more numbers. 
uh, he compared to Carson Wentz, who has an average yard per attempt at seven yards per attempt. Jared Goff is a little higher at 7.7 yards per attempt. So we give Goff that credit. Uh, let's go into the records. Uh, Carson Wentz is 23-17 and 17 overall for his career as the starter for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, doesn't sound great. Doesn't sound great. But to be fair to Carson, he's played eight games less because he's not reliable enough to stay on the field. So we give him a little pass on that. Jared Goff, he's 24-14. We'll give him a pass as well. He's played 10 games less because Jeff Fisher is an idiot. So we give him a pass on the wins and losses compared to Dak. Let's get into completion percentage, right? Dak can't throw. He's inaccurate. He he, he can't throw. Dak has averaged 61.1%. Actually, no, I'm misstating that. 66.1% completion percentage. 66%. Compared to Jared Goff, 62.1%. Carson Wentz, 63.7% completion percentage. Hmm, that's weird. I thought Dak couldn't throw. Oh, let's get into some more throwing. Uh, you know, Jared Goff, he's 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 uh, 65 touchdowns, 26 interceptions. Carson Wentz is at 70 touchdowns, 28 interceptions. Whereas Dak is at 67 touchdowns. And uh, only 25 interceptions. So he's right up there with Jared Goff and Carson Wentz as far as touchdowns to interceptions. But he has the higher completion percentage. Uh, Now let's get to some even bigger facts about Dak that makes him a franchise quarterback. Dak Prescott has the highest ever average completion percentage for any quarterback starting off in his first three seasons. Wrap your mind around that. Do the media talks about? Do the media talk about these things? No, of course not, because they love hating Dak Prescott because he's the Dallas Cowboys quarterback. So they're always gonna hate on him, right? So he's got the highest completion percentage for of any quarterback starting off in his first three seasons. Oh, you want more? Let's give you a little bit more. He has the most fourth quarter comebacks by any quarterback in the first three seasons, including greats like. Uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers, uh, Brady, Breeze, all these guys, he's got more comebacks than they do in the last three seasons. I mean, I thought he couldn't throw. He couldn't. He's inaccurate. He's unreliable. He, he's a turnover machine. He's this, he's that. But he's led, he's leading in the most comebacks by any quarterback in the last three seasons. Last year, he led the league in uh, fourth quarter comebacks. This year, he came in number two to Drew Brees, who's having arguably his greatest season of his NFL career. Wrap your mind around that. Have you heard this by anybody? No, you haven't. Because it's always been about Dak is inaccurate. Dak is this. Dak is that. Uh, he, 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 He can't throw. He can't throw. But those are lies because they're not backing those up by any statistical facts. And the reason why I like these kind of stats, because stats is the cousin of facts. Get that. Here's a punchline for you. Here's a, a slogan for you to put on a bumper sticker or to put on a tag, catchy tagline. Facts is the cousin of stats, or stats is the cousin of facts. That's what it is. So Dak Prescott is one of the top quarterbacks in the league. Dak Prescott is a very liable franchise quarterback going forward. Do I believe in the guy? Obviously. You've seen what he can do at the Giants game. Uh, is he still a project that needs to be developed? Yeah, he's only been playing for three seasons. But these first three seasons, I'll take this over a lot of quarterbacks right now playing in this league. Point is, Dak Prescott is the future. Dak Prescott isn't going anywhere. Dak Prescott will be getting his money. And Dak Prescott will be bringing the Dallas Cowboys a championship in the near future. I believe this. Quote me on it. All right? So get your stats together. Get your facts together. All right? Eat on that, Cowboys haters.